Hey, what's up, Young Dog Middle School? Welcome back to another Sunday sermon. Um, and I hope you guys are doing well. I know I was off last week, but uh, let's go over a few announcements before we begin today. Um, after service, grab some lunch and come back because we are going to be having small group together, all right, at 1 p.m. So make sure you come back for that. Also, we're having Wednesday night Bible study again at 7.30, no, I'm sorry, at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. So make sure you come to that. And 7.30 on Fridays, we have our FNF. So come to that for a time of fun together. And finally, if you're not getting my announcements, including the awesome weekly photos that I have in those emails, please sign up for my email list. All right, cool. With that, let's pray and then we will begin. Lord, we ask for your spirit to come and open us up to your word today. May you work in us and speak through the Bible as we meditate on the message that you have prepared for your people. Give us the wisdom to understand and the character to apply what we learn to our walk with you. We thank you for your grace. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. All right, well, how'd you guys like the week off from my sermons, all right? So it's been a while, but I hope you guys remember what we talked about right before I left, which was the last part of the Ten Commandments. And we started off with the Ten Commandments because I wanted to show you guys the foundations of the Christian faith. Basically, what are the things that Jesus, that, that God cares about? What are the things that God says is important when it comes to our relationship with Him and our relationship with other people? So, if you guys haven't been following those Ten Commandments, if those Ten Commandments have not been the foundation of your behavior and the way you live your life, then you've been living a very unwise and a very uh, selfish and a very unrighteous lifestyle. A lifestyle that's filled with sin. And in the Bible, there is a word for people who live in that sort of unrighteousness. And that word is fools, right? It's the lifestyle of the fool and the unwise. But Pastor Kevin, Pastor Kevin, it's not like the Ten Commandments relate to everything that happens in life, right? I can hear you guys asking me that. So what if a situation occurs that isn't listed in the Ten Commandments, right? What if... What if something happens and it's not directly quoted or stated in the Bible? What am I supposed to do then? What if, what if my friend at school is, is being mean or telling lies about me? Does the Bible say anything about that? Because I feel like that situation isn't really in the Bible. What if my mom or dad is sick and I don't know how to respond in a godly way? Well, that's the point of the book that we're going to start studying today, which is the book of Proverbs, all right? The book of Proverbs. How do we handle life's problems? How do we deal with mean, rude, or bad, or selfish people? How do we act when we are uncomfortable or when we are in an awkward situation or moment? How are we supposed to express our emotions and how we feel? Well, the Bible tells us that a person who is able to live life and answer these questions in a godly way is wise, Okay, wise. What is wise? What is wisdom? Well, in the Hebrew, the word is chokmah, or sometimes hakam, right? This word doesn't mean being smart. Being smart doesn't mean you are wise. You could be the smartest person in the entire world, and you could still be a fool, according to the Bible. You could still be unwise, even if you know a lot of things. That's because knowledge and being smart, that's just about knowing stuff, right? Knowing about something. But wisdom... Wisdom is about how to act correctly in the situation. Wisdom is knowing how to behave properly. Wisdom is knowing how to think and live and speak with righteousness and love. So are you ready to learn how to be a wise person? Then let's jump right into today's passage. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Okay, We're going to read the passage together in the normal ESV translation that we always do. But then after that, I want to show you guys how I would translate it, okay? Because Pastor Kevin also learned and took Hebrew and he did his research. And I want you guys to understand what this chapter is talking about. Because chapter one of Proverbs is basically a summary of what the entire book is supposed to be about. And if we don't understand Proverbs one well, then we're not going to really understand Proverbs at all. So let's read together from Proverbs chapter one, verses one through six. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. This is the word of God. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. 
Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. Amen. Nice. Now, how many of you guys understood that? Understood all of that? I'm willing to bet not many of you, okay? Okay, let's try this again, but let's do it in the Pastor Kevin version or the PKV, okay? Let's go. Let's do this. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. PKV, not ESV this time. Here we go. I'm going to put it up on screen because obviously you guys can't find us anywhere, but here we go. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. This book will give you wisdom if you obey what they say, and you will understand the deep meaning behind each proverb. This book will teach you the right way to behave, how to live in a right way, and do what is honest, and be fair to others. This book can make the inexperienced people into clever people, and immature people into wise and disciplined people. Wise people can become even wiser by paying attention to these Proverbs, and smart people will learn how to understand the meaning of Proverbs and other sayings, as well as the teachings and riddles of wise people. So basically, this entire book, okay, according to Proverbs 1, is about teaching us how to live wisely, act wisely, speak wisely, and treat others wisely. It's an entire book about how to be wise, hokma or hakam. How can we do that? Well, the answer, the answer is in the last verse for today, and that comes from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read it together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Well, what does this mean? What is the fear of the Lord? Does that mean be very afraid of what God will do to you if you don't follow Him? Right? If you, don't, if you disobey God, He's going to punish you, so be scared. Is that what it is? No, it's not. Absolutely not. Right? What is a better translation? Well, let's turn to the PKV one more time. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 in the PKV, the Pastor Kevin version. Here we go. If you respect and honor God, that is the starting point to becoming wise. However, foolish people think wisdom and good advice are worth nothing. So, where do we have to start if we want to be wise? According to this verse. It's very easy, right? We've got to start with God. We have to start with God. There is no wisdom without God. Foolish people are not wise because they reject God. If you want wisdom, you have to begin with God. What does this mean for us today? Well, are you inexperienced? Huh? Yeah, middle school, I feel like you might be. Are you immature? Huh? I think all of us are in some way or another. Are you foolish? Do you want to be wise? Do you want to be disciplined? Do you want to be righteous? Do you want to be honorable? Do you want to be honest and fair? Then you have to start with God. Do you feel like you're not where you are supposed to be or where you need to be? Do you feel worthless? Do you feel like life is pointless and nothing really makes you that happy? The problem isn't that you're not reading enough Bible. The problem is not that you're not praying enough. The problem is not that you're not coming to church enough. The problem is that you don't know God. You don't know who He is. You've probably been going to church your entire life, your entire life, but you have no idea who He is. Oh, I'm sure you have some vague one-liners or memory verses that you really like that make you think you know God because you learned them from somewhere or from someone. But do you really know Him? Do you speak with Him? Do you know what He cares about? How about God's people? Do you take care of God's people the way He wants you to? What do you really know about God, about who He is, about what He cares for, what He stands for, what He represents? That's why as we start this series through the book of Proverbs, we're not just learning about wisdom. These are wise sayings and, and wise pieces of advice that are designed and written by people who also knew God very well. That's why they were wise. That's why they were able to make these sayings up. Think of someone that you consider as wise in your life. Someone who, who really lives and acts and speaks with wisdom and grace, someone, someone that you really feel like knows God. Are you thinking of them right now? Now, what made you believe that this person was wise? Was it because they were just so smart? 
They're like really intelligent. That's why they're wise. Was it because they just read the Bible a lot? Is that why they're wise? Was it because they prayed all the time or went to church more than once throughout the week? Is, is that why they were wise? Or was it their attitude? Was it the way that they talked to you with love and kindness? Was it how they treated everyone as equal with fairness and with respect? Was it how they never trash talked or talked down to anybody else? Was it because they seemed to live and breathe and think the same way that Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago? You see, wise people know God. Wise people know God. They respect, they honor, and they worship God. And when they do, they slowly start to become more like His Son, Jesus. The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And wisdom, according to the Bible, is the person who knows and loves Jesus Christ. The foundation, the beginning, the starting point for wisdom and to become a wise person is to know and love our God. So as we jump into our new series uh, in the book of Proverbs, let's learn together about who God is, what God cares about, about who Jesus is throughout this series. Let's, let's start at the beginning of wisdom. Start at the very beginning, which is to know our God. Let's pray. Jesus, make us wise like you. We want to know and love you. We want to start on the path toward wisdom and knowledge. As we study the book of Proverbs together, I pray that our students can understand the true meaning of wisdom. May they have a better understanding of who you are and what you care about through our study of this book. We pray for your Holy Spirit to continue to work in us, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I will see you right after uh, worship service is over at small group. Remember, there is praise right after this, so don't go anywhere. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.
you keep yourself away? All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of Joy, you're the reason that I sing. You are. 
Thank you. 